And what we're building here is what I intend to be the world's most comprehensive human movement laboratory. So there's a, a camera system to measure with submillimeter accuracy how a person moves their kinematics. And we have specialized uh, treadmills and sensors that measure kinetics, how much force a person is exerting. Uh, we can measure what the muscles are doing, how they're being fired by the spinal cord. Uh, we can measure how, they're de how they move the torx and powers of the ankle, knee, and hip, or any, any joint in the body. So I lost my uh, biological legs to frostbite. I was in a mountain climbing accident uh, when I was 17 years old. Uh, and after months of struggles, the, my medical team gave up the efforts to save the biological tissues, and both my legs were amputated below the knee. Uh, I was fitted with artificial limbs a few months after the amputation surgeries, and I was I was displeased. Uh, they were uh, far more rudimentary than I had hoped they would be. Uh, they were passive without sensing or any form of computation or muscle-like actuation. I basically said, this is it, are you kidding me? From that point on, I, I kind of began designing, designing my own limbs, and then later uh, limbs for, for other people. These are called biomes. Uh, it's, a, it's, it's a technology that's now being used by hundreds of people. Um, many uh, US soldiers that have lost limbs and have returned from Iraq and Afghanistan are, are using the biome. Uh, the biome is a, the world's first foot, ankle, bionic limb. Uh, it has several computers, many sensors, uh, it emulates in synthetic form what the human foot ankle complex does, the biological foot ankle complex. So as I walk, it senses the world and uh, it responds reflexively in a way that the human calf muscle responds reflexively, controlled by the spinal cord. So we've captured that, those fundamentals of how humans move in, in synthetic version. For the first time in history, I'm able to walk at normal speeds. I'm able to walk at normal levels of energy. And my, my stability is, is, is enhanced compared to conventional prostheses. Bionic limbs actually propel a person in their movement pattern, in their walking, in their running. They actually inject energy. Uh, they actually, to some degree, transport a human, like the muscles once did in the biological leg. So what you see here is a powered knee. Uh, so this would be bolted to the, the powered foot ankle biome uh, for people that are amputated above the knee. We're in a design testing process of this powered knee. It's very, very exciting um, to see. We're also building uh, how, how the bionic limb is attached to the body mechanically. So we're developing these 3D printed structures I definitely would not be doing what I'm doing today if it hadn't been for the accident on Mount Washington. That's, that's for sure. My goal prior to the accident would, was to be the best mountain climber in the world. I had, no, I had no interest even to going to college. When I go to my high school reunions, they're like, that can't be you. It just, there's no way. It's no way it's you. I'm often asked to, to speak to, to visit a person that's <clears throat> about to get their limb amputated or or, or has recently gotten their limb amputated. It's a very difficult recovery road. If you know you're going to get there, um, it, it makes the, the journey palpable and tractable and uh, people can be stronger through that very difficult days. We started a, a fund called the No Bears Boston Fund uh, to help pay for specialized prostheses for the arts and for the athletics. So if, if a Boston bombing victim has lost a limb, wants to run again, uh, we can, this fund can help them run again. If they want to scuba dive or dance or whatever it may be, uh, this fund is there to support them.